Cambados, capital of Albariño, in the denomination of origin Ria Spices. This is the best known wine region of Galicia and produces some of Spain's most sought after dry white wines based on the Albariño grape. Ria Spices is a very diverse wine production area with five different sustones that enable a full expression of the different characteristics of this grape. A region characterized by high rainfall levels and providing vibrantly fresh whites that are being recognized internationally as excellent to accompany the highest quality cuisine. Of course, no better food to eat with Albariño than marisco, as selfish is called here. I promise that you will enjoy this journey. Rias Baisas is a Spanish denomination of origin for wines located in the autonomous community of Galicia, Spain. The DO is divided into five sub zones, four of them in the province of Pontevedra and one in the south of the province of A Coruña. Baldo Salnes, where most planters concentrate, Oro Sal, bordering with Portugal in the south, and Condado Dotea founded the denomination with Sotomayor and Ribeira de Ulla incorporated in 1996 and 2000 respectively. Legend says that the Albariño grape was brought in the 12th century to the monastery of Armenteira by the French monks of Cluny. Whether brought by then or not, the monastical order was responsible for its cultivation in the Middle Ages and the spreading to the rest of Galicia and the north of Portugal. The Umia River has witnessed the success of Albariño planted for centuries along its banks. But Albariño has not always been grown in all subsons of Ria Spices. Some of them have seen it explode only recently. Ria Spices acquired its official status as a denomination of origin in 1988 and is currently making high-quality wines in every single piece of land within the DO. I'm here in Pontevedra. I'm uh, with Juan Gil de Araujo, who is the president of the regulatory council of the denomination of origin Ria Spices. Hi, Juan. Glad to be here. Thanks for receiving us. Glad that you came to the regulatory council of the denomination of origin Rias Baixas in the beautiful town of Pontevedra. Along the 20th century, there have been wineries with Albariño wines on the market. There was not just one, there were several. However, there were none until the 80s, when this area started to wake up. In the 80s, some cooperatives started and Albariño plantings were expanded. In 1982, the Albariño denomination of origin was created. It was short-lived, as soon after Spain joined the European Union. And since the variety Albariño was world heritage, 
it cannot be monopolized by a specific denomination limiting the use of the variety. In 1988, finally, around 15 producers created the denomination of origin Riyadh Baishas. Riyadh Baishas for us, as I in Spaniard as well, has a clear meaning. However, someone from an outside may not know it. In Galicia, there is a region where there is a set of fingers where the ocean gets inside land, so to speak. We always make a comparison with the Norwegian fjords. I hope Norwegians, when they explain their fjords, say that they look like the Riath Baishas. These are tongues of sea getting in land. Yes, and they coincide with the river mouths in Galicia. We have the Rias Altas in the Cantabric Ocean and part of the Atlantic, down to the Finisterre Cape. And from the Finisterre Cape to the south, we have the Riath Baishas. Since that moment, in 1988, with the official creation and the Spanish recognition, until now, what has changed? There has been a very important change in quantitative terms, as we don't only have those 14, 15 wineries that we had originally, or the approximately 400 viticulturists that were included. Right now, we have 186 wineries elaborating wine. Sorry, 168 wineries elaborating, and over 180 formally inscribed. And viticulturists? 5,186, if I'm not wrong. And in hectares, we have more than 4,000, so we have grown substantially. And qualitatively, we have also changed substantially. Initially, all was based on the elaboration of fresh alberino for the consumption in the year, basically. Nowadays, there are many wineries performing diverse elaboration styles, special elaborations that provide an added value. Criantha on lees with barrique, leading to a range of super premium wines that are a success around the world. The current denomination of origin is a different thing. I'm with Marisol Bueno, who is family owner of Bodegas Pazo de Señorans, uh, here in the denomination of origin, uh, Rias Baisas. Hello, Marisol. How are you? Very well. We're in a Paso. Your Paso, this building, for example, and all this land, was built in the 16th century. The first construction of this Paso was in the 16th century. It was done by Alonso de Senorens, who was in the church. Along the centuries, all these houses have been remodeled. These stairs are from the 18th century, the church as well. Many of these passes, as you were saying, were remodeled in the 18th century. They were built earlier, but remodeled later, which means they have a mix of styles. Most have a mix of styles. The most visual details are usually from the 18th century as they experienced a successful time in terms of agriculture and they had the means to improve the payos. Here lived the noble families of each parroquia. Not exactly of each parroquia. In all parroquias, there are payos. There are parroquias with more than one payos. It depends on the wealth of each parroquia or town. And they live here and they have their business here. And they make wine here. Indeed, wine was made in this pasture. You have an old winery inside this house, right? Yes. This is an area with a mild climate. Very good for agriculture, for all kinds of products. Back then they had animals, cereal, wine and probably olive oil. We have seen a dope coat. They also have boats. And even a chapel. Yes, most poets have their own chapel. In this case, a pretty big one. Let's go see it. We are in the chapel of the Paso, a pretty large chapel. Yes, a pretty large chapel for a single family. This is an illustration of the wealthy times of the 18th century. Let's go now to see the old cellar and the stone lagar. Perfect. 
We're in the Lagar, in the old winery of the past. Indeed, this is a stone Lagar with all the antique operation tools. Yes, a stone Lagar, very old. They had merit to bring these granite stones here by hand. We're in the part of the winery where the grapes were pressed. This is the old press. These are the baskets where the grapes were brought in. They have this shape with a wide top to rest it on the head and to get more volume of grapes. First they put the grapes in this compartment, where they stomped on the grapes, and the must left through this channel. When they could not extract more juice with their feet, they transferred the grapes to this other compartment. They put woods on top until arriving to the heights of that big tree branch, and they turned this endless screw. As a result, this big stone is lifted and they could exert much more pressure on the grapes. As the stone went down, the... the stone goes up and the branch presses on the grapes. When it went all the way down, they repeated the process by adding more wood and raising the stone again. That was done until nothing was left to be extracted. It was a gentle way of extracting the juice, but also very efficient. And a lot of work as well. Lots of work, yes. I'm in Meaño with uh, Luis Garcia, who is the owner of Bodegas Luis Garcia, and we're going to be talking about the history of this area uh, when it comes to agriculture, not just viticulture. Hello, Luis. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. We're in Foron of an Oreo. How do you call it here? Oreo or Piorno. These are made with here with granite, which is a stone found here. They were raised to prevent rats and other animals. Correct. They were raised for two main reasons. Prevent animals from getting in, particularly mice. This stone was used here for that. Because they can get up there but cannot go through here. It was a defense against animals, but also for ventilation. Apart from being raised away from the ground, there are all these openings, separations between the woods, to ventilate as much as possible. Because they were used to store food, right? Yes, mainly corn. That is what I wanted to ask you about. This is an area now, particularly this valley, mainly dedicated to the growth of Alvarino grapes. There, what you look at, all you see is Alvarino. But that was not so in the past. Before, there were other agricultural products here. Yes, they grew potatoes, corn, and diverse grains. But these have disappeared as agriculture has changed. Right, as wine has become a luxury and entertainment product, it provides a little more money than tomatoes, perhaps. Correct. Also, the production structure in this area is very complicated, as there are not large fields that make growing these products profitable. One curiosity is that the most productive zones from the Gulf of cereal and other agricultural products were the plains. These higher and pure terrains in the slopes were the worst. And now it's right the opposite, right? Yes, these high terrains have always been good for the cultivation of the vine. That's why vineyards were only planted in these terrains a little further for dry farming, as they were not good for the primary consumption products. Can this door be open? I assume it is empty now. Yes, it is at the moment. Let me try to open it. It is completely empty. I assume that this was filled all the way to the top. In the past, all the way to the top with corn. The main grapes here are the autochthonous varieties. There is no international variety admitted in the DO. Whoever wants to make a wine out of them can do it without problem, but it would not be a Rias Baixas wine. We have a good set of autochthonous varieties, mainly Alberino, which accounts for 95% of the production, and then the Caino Blanco, Lurero, Treixadura, Godeo, etc. Plus the red wines with autochthonous varieties. We have a series of rules to guarantee quality, as, for example, manual harvest, and the requirement to use cases in the harvest. We are contemplating alternative processes, but for the moment we are not allowing mechanized harvesting or other processes that are used in other areas. Then there are other aspects, such as the maximum yield permitted. 
At this moment, we have 12,000 kilos per hectare as maximum yield for Alberino and a little less for other varieties. With respect to analytics, we have some restrictions and measures, not restrictive, but as an indication of the quality that we look for in our wines. In relation to wine qualifications, I don't know which wines you have here. With respect to qualifications, any winery that wants to label a wine under the denomination of origin Riath Baishas must request it to the council for our technicians to go to the winery, to take samples of the wine and to run the corresponding analyses. The winemaker will also run an analysis of the wine and declare that the wine conforms to the regulation of the council. With these two tests, the one from the producer and the one from the council, the wine is tasted and officially verified. This is important. The qualification is made by the producer. The council only verifies that it's correct. All right, Juan, thank you very much for receiving us. You're welcome. Glad to be here talking about wine, which is our thing. I am in Meaño to discuss the climate, the geology and the soils of the denomination of origin Ria Spices. We will learn about the subtle differences between the five sous leading to a diversity of options when it comes to its wines. The climate is maritime and strongly influenced by the Atlantic Ocean bordering the area. Wet winters and sea fog are characteristics of this region. Rainfall is high, over 2,000 mm per annum, particularly in the most northern areas. Temperatures are mild, not exceeding 30 degrees Celsius in summer and rarely dropping below zero degrees in winter. The coldest areas are Rivera do Oya and Bol de Sainés due to their proximity to the coast. The warmest is Condado do Tea, where temperatures in summer can reach 40 degrees Celsius. Due to the proximity to the Atlantic, the DO often suffers from strong winds that can pose a challenge to the vineyards, particularly for those closest to the coast. Frost and hailstone often represent a threat as well. But the local growers know this very well. Let's ask them. Well, uh, I'm here in Rivadumia. I'm with Santiago Roma, who is the owner of Bodega Santiago Roma and we will discuss with him several things. Hi Santiago, thanks for receiving us. Hi, thanks. Describe the climate of this area. It is a climate of Atlantic influence. Humidity dominates, united to a sea breeze that translates into our wines. Together with the sandy loam texture of our soils, it allows us to achieve very fresh white wines with structure and persistence that makes the wines to last, maintaining its youth. You have lots of rain here as a general characteristic with around 2,000 millimeters per annum. That's an approximate average. It can vary, but lately with the climate change we have been experiencing a high variability. Springs are not particularly springs and winters are not winters anymore. Climatologically speaking, the climate change is affecting us very much. I'm in Castrelo, in, uh, it's a parroquia of uh, Cambados, and I'm with Surso Alba, who is the family owner of Bodegas Albamar. Hi Surso, how are you? Hello. The climate is the most complicated thing that we have in this area. We have two extremes. In viticulture, to obtain good fruit is a difficult climate. On the other side, this climate provides some characteristics to the wines that can hardly be found in other places in the world. We have a high natural acidity, thanks to the climate, and a moderate alcoholic grade. Another particularity, for better or worse, is the high rainfall level. 
We have 1200 to 1600 millimeters per square meter. It depends a bit on the year. Aside from having very mild temperatures, we have very high humidity. Today, we have a cloudy day with lots of humidity and fog. However, yesterday, we had a very sunny day with very hot temperatures. This contrast creates an optimal scenario for the development of vine diseases. And all this due to the proximity to the ocean. Indeed, we see one of the sea tongues getting in land, which is what you call Hiria, right? You can see the tide changing. When we arrived half an hour ago, there was no water. Yes, this also affects for good and bad. Bad because of the development of diseases. Good because of the characteristics that it confers to our wines. We get very fresh wines and moderate alcohol levels. This is an Atlantic climate, very rainy in autumn and winter, and dry times during the summer. The rainfall level, I believe you're right to 2,000 millimeters. Yes, in this area in particular, we are well over 1,000. Orography, geology and soils vary across the five south zones of Rias Baisas. Baldo Sainés, where I am, located on the lower part of the river Umia, near the town of Cambados, presents low corrugated hills of rocky and alluvial soils. Or Rosal, farther south along the Portuguese border, in the basin of the river Menu, is a beautiful area where vineyards are found on terraces of alluvial soil. Condado Dotea, in the west along the Miño Valley and towards the Ribeiro Dio, presents a more abrupt landscape, full of river valleys with granite and slate soils. The Soto Mayor, up south of Pontevedra, has light soils of sand covered with granite. And finally, Ribera do Oya, north of Pontevedra, presents alluvial soils. When it comes to soils, here you have a very clear example of how granite decomposes. This is the composed granite, right? That's correct. You can also see it in a rock with a vertical cut over there. Here, basically 90% is granite, more or less, decomposed, but granite nevertheless. In this particular area, we also have some clay, particularly here in Val dos Almes, within the Rias Baixas. There are some areas with slate, others with sand, but what dominates is decomposed granite. Evidently, granite promotes freshness in the wines, which tend to be less structured, more direct, vertical, and the acidity is noted more. Conversely, in a clay soil, the wine gains structure. It gains muscle and body. The acidity is less noticeable, it's hidden. There is still tension and freshness, but it's not highlighted as much as with granite. These are very vertical wines and with higher aromatic intensity. Small parcellation is the norm here. And we have adapted to this. Finding vineyards of more than one hectare is difficult? It is complicated. The large parcels with new plantings are only found in terrains that are less adequate for the vine. Those can be larger than an hectare. Traditional viticulture has been based on making the best use of the terrain that can only be found in small parcels. With respect to location, I assume that there should be very important differences. For example, this beautiful vineyard that you have here in this hill must be different from those in the lower areas of the valley. How is that? There are several reasons. First, on a slope vineyard, the rainwater flows down the hill and it carries nutrients with it. The terrain loses nutrients and becomes less productive. This confers the vines with higher quality. The soils are mainly composed of a substrate of granite. Some plots have a little higher concentration of sand but the base is granite. This makes these soils very porous. 
These were mountains of granite that have decomposed with time. This is what we see here, in the brown soil. Yes, dark brown, almost black in some areas. Depending on the organic matter content, it will be less or darker. You were telling me before that granite soils confer a particular characteristic to the fruit, whether they are tomatoes or grapes. A point of acidity. Lots of acidity. Not a very high acidity, but just the characteristic point of acidity that makes us differentiate from other areas. Which is what characterizes Albariño wines, right? Yes, to Albariño in general and to all wines of Galicia. The main definition is very little soil. And in the subsoil, we find sand and loam with very high porosity. In our vines that are planted in high slopes, as you can see, the rain does not translate into excessive vigor. We look for a proper maturation and a balance between alcoholic grade and total acidity. That's why the wines from our plots have personality. They have good drainage and can withstand lots of water. Is that because the slope makes the water to flow? The terrains in the coast and the denomination of origin Rias Baixas have a high porosity level. But we also have deeper terrains in the valley, closer to the river Umia. We are in the high areas. Those closer to the river are much deeper. And the vines have way more vigor and produce more grapes per hectare. But then the cycle of phenolic and aromatic maturation is weaker in the zones with more vigor. I will introduce this section from a Galician Paso in the town of Paradela, from where we will move to visit local growers to discuss about the viticultural practices and grapes grown in Rias Baixas. We will learn about both traditional and modern methods and find out how the best Albariño wines are made possible starting from the work in the vineyard. Viticulture in Rias Baixas is characterized by an extreme parcellation of vineyards in very small plots. There are more than 5,000 viticulturists in the deal, taking care of about 21,000 vineyards of an average size of 0.2 hectares each. Grape growing is an activity that has been transmitted from generation to generation for centuries and is practiced in a traditional method. This has led to a conservation of biodiversity that translates into a very diverse range of wine styles and personalities. Pruning and harvest must be done manually and field labor is usually done in the more sustainable way. Representative of this region are the parrales, which is the trellising of the vines along granite posts and wires that help increase exposition to sunlight and aeration to prevent fungal diseases. The climate change is affecting these practices as well, with less rain that represents a particular challenge to soils with low water retention capability. Luis, let's talk about viticulture. This is traditional viticulture. It cannot be more traditional. It has been done like this during many centuries. We are in a para or a parral, where you grow albariño grapes. Why like this instead of bunch or vertically trellis vines? In this area, what governs our viticulture during the summer is humidity. We are next to the Atlantic and there is a constant supply of humidity. This is our way of making ecologic viticulture. We raise the grapes and we get natural ventilation. We bring them far from the ground, where the humidity level is always higher. The grape branches hang from the top and the leaves provide shelter from the sunlight. And the wind channeled by the para cleans and dries the grapes. What do you do with these leaves that get in the middle? We try to get rid of them one by one. For how long do you have to do this? We do this during a month. We call this defoliation. This helps obtain a proper ventilation of the grape bunches. Also, when it comes to the time of harvest, which is manual, we don't have to look for the bunches as they are clearly seen. We don't have to waste time looking for them among the leaves. And finally, the disease treatments are more efficient. 
what are the most common diseases that you had to face? The worst is the mildew. There are other diseases, but mildew is the main one. Sometimes closer to the harvest, we can have episodes with botrytis, which is the grey or bunch rot. But that is easier to control. The planting structure is important. The distance between vines and between parallels to obtain good ventilation channels and or the sun to reach the ground during the morning and the afternoon. That helps that the fungi that usually attack the vineyard each year don't become very aggressive, as in areas with poor ventilation. This is why we separate them from the ground. We are also interested in preventing the grapes to get direct sunlight exposure and to avoid the strong heat during the summer. The grapes should not be burnt from the top. In order to generate good aromas, it needs a slow phenolic maturation cycle. This is a vineyard in the future. We planted it two, three months ago, in February or March. We got rid of the plants here. This was all eucalyptus. We eliminated the roots, we excavated, we fertilized it and planted the vines. We also planted legume plants to provide nitrogen and structure to the soil. We planted them in February and we are now installing the posts and the wires to form the paral. There's an explanation for this. Here we work mainly with albariño. It is a very vigorous vine that needs space. There is high humidity, as you can see, and moderate temperatures. What we want is for the vine to develop in a raised area to avoid the humidity in the ground and protect it from the diseases that we have here. Albariño is the most famous grape and responsible of 95% of the plantings, but it's not the only one. The Regulatory Council authorizes another 11 different grape varieties, including Loreira Blanca, Trisadura, among the whites, and Mencia Caño Tinto or Espadeiro, among the reds. But it would not be fair to dedicate too much time to discuss this, as over 90% of the wines produced in Rias Baisas are right predominantly based on Albariño. In other words, Rias Baisas is synonym of Albariño. How do you define Albariño? A variety of white grape with small bunches, with small oval berries, with characteristics of phenolic maturation and concentration are superior to other varieties, such as Treixadura, which is of a larger size, and we also have it in the denomination of origin, but it has different characteristics. The alcoholic graduation is lower. In a normal maturation cycle with Albariño, we achieve 12 or 12.5 degrees of potential alcohol, which is what defines the average quality of the wines. Also it's acidity. It is a fresh variety with great acidity, which is excellent to accompany culinary dishes based on fees or shellfish, which is typical from here. But it's also a very versatile grape, right? As it can be elaborated in this dynamic style, but it can also lead to very sophisticated wines, more structural and complex. Indeed, you have patented a new method of elaboration of Albariño using granite barriques, which are made with Galician granite. Yes, we try to differentiate our styles. We like to innovate and create new projects. Among them, the first wine in the world elaborated in a granite barrique. Depending on the pattern of the vineyard, it gives small or very small berries, very delicate and with intense aromas. Also very versatile, right? As it allows you to make it in different styles. You have different styles, right? Well, we elaborate a classic albariño. We don't use wood or anything like that but we do use some methods that I will show you later. If you go back in history, in this region, the Riaz Baixas, 
Back before the 80s, most grapes around here were red. Autochthonous varieties like Espadero, Lurero, Caino, Menthia a little more recently, but mainly Caino, Lurero and Espadero are varieties very intrinsic to this region. What happened is that in the 80s, there was a boom with Alberino, and there was a conversion from red varieties to Alberino. Now we are starting to plant red varieties again. Indeed, we have Caino in this area. We want to recover those autochthonous varieties. I am convinced that they produce a wine style that nowadays most people are looking for. Easy wines to drink, fluid, dynamic, with a low alcoholic grade, as we have in this region. I'm again in Cambados, and it's time to find out how Albariño is converted into a fresh white wine of distinction and quality. We will ask the winemakers how they transfer the freshness of the grapes into the wines and what are the variations in the elaboration methods that lead to the diverse styles found here. Let's get into the heart of winemaking in Rías Baixas. Santi, you elaborate your wines in a diverse range of styles. Some are fresh and fruity, those for more volume production. Others that are more selected, and others that you have pioneered. You elaborate wine in a granite barrique, like this one that we have here, so fresh and beautiful. Tell me how this day came to life. This is the Pilot Barrique. It is the first that we fabricated in a totally artisan way. It was done out of a single solid stone, a single piece. We shaped it in the shape of an egg on the outside and the interior was perforated with an industrial drill in a granite shop nearby, close to the city hall in Rivadumia. And the rest was emptied manually by the artisan of the shop, until he achieved the same shape in the interior than in the exterior. The idea was to get this shape maintaining 10 centimeters of thickness for the wall of the barrique. In the shape of an egg, as it is known to help maintaining the lease in suspension for a longer time. Before making this pilot barrique, you try different kinds of granite stones, right? Placing them in wine to see how the wine and the granite intertwine. And then you broke them to see how deep the wine had entered the stone. This way you decided what granite was best for your purposes. To test the capillarity and the penetration of the wine, we had to perform many trials with different kinds of granite. We chose this one as a result, and also because it's easier to work into a barrique. It is the most resistant and crystalline. It does not have many defects. Defects can give lots of problems when fabricating a piece like this. And we finally decided to use this one, and with a thickness of 10 centimeters, to enable the desired degree of micro-oxygenation to allow a special elaboration that can convince other wineries that are willing to acquire one of these barriques that it provides unique wines. How deep the wine enters the granite wall? Between two and three centimeters. And out of this interchange, the wine will absorb some of the particularities of the granite that you don't find in any other wine in the world. That's correct. There are some characteristics very peculiar to this type of granite, a range of salts, including potassium salts, that by electrolysis, they decompose and provide the liquid inside the barrique with personality and make the wine to acquire distinct aromatic and analytic characteristics. Luis, we are in the elaboration room. You harvest the grapes manually. Yes, we start with this, that we hang it to the wire in the parale and we place the grapes inside. Then we transport them in these boxes. They are mandatory plastic boxes for the transportation of the grapes. Nothing else can be used. The boxes must be plastic and perforated. This makes the grapes to arrive to the winery without damage. No damage of any kind. The grapes arrive very healthy. 
When they arrive here, what we do as quickly as possible is to press them. Before that, we destem them. Then we cool the mass down as quickly as possible as well. For how long do you cool it down? The first thing is to get rid of the gross leaves. We clarify the must. And we transfer it directly to the vessels for the alcoholic fermentation. The fermentation is done at a constant temperature that depending on the year can last 10, 15 or 20 days. But one characteristic thing that we do to all our wines is a criantha on its leaves, a natural criantha by gravity. The sediments of the wine precipitate and are collected at the bottom and then we put them on top of the vessel again. We do this continuously during two, three or four months to make the wine to gain complexity, to gain structure in the mouth. You have two styles, one that is a bit more select from the vineyards that we have seen before and another one that you elaborate from all the other small vineyards in the area. That's correct. We have the Albariño Black Label, which comes from a unique parcel that we have here in the state. It is a very special vineyard. The main difference is that the grapes are more select, better grapes. And the Criantha with leaves is for a longer time. More time, at least four months. The other wine, the White Label, comes from the other vineyards that we have. These are not bad, but they are not as select as the first one. We also use a Criantha on lees, but normally for less than two months, because we are looking for a different style of wine. We press whole bunches, always bunches with stems. This is a peculiarity of our elaboration. Our virtues could also be our defects. We don't use anything at all, not cultured yeast, not enzymes, not deacidifying agents, nothing. We only use sulfur, and not in all the wines. Only the antioxidant and bentonite, which is a clarifier based on clay. A natural product, and not for all our wines. We look for authenticity. Wines with more personality, but naturally occurring. Indeed, we press whole bunches because the stems absorb some acidity. It also provides some equilibrium, as the stems also provide some natural tannins that will prolong the life of the wine. You elaborate in a stainless steel, but also in good fortress. Depending on the style, are you looking for different characteristics? The Fudras arrived after a Riesling trip, an area that I love. A producer whose wines I like a lot works with Fudras from two companies, and after that trip, I decided to use them as well. After the first year, we have observed that the wines develop a little more, just one step up. We have some wines that are 100% elaborated in Fudra, with all the Criantha in wood, and others that we combine different methods. I love stainless steel as well as I believe that it is a material that respects the grape, the prime product, and that it doesn't interfere for good or bad. I like to get the authenticity of the wine, and then the wood provides a plus, a little complexity and longevity to the wines that we are interested in. You also make red wines and you age them in barriques like this. What are the differences in the elaboration of your reds? Actually, we elaborate the reds in the same way that we work our whites. The only difference is that after harvesting, we stomp on the grapes, and we do it as it was done in the past, like it has been done here for centuries. We do not modernize ourselves in this respect. We continue doing it in the same way that it has been done in the past. We step on the grapes and we let fermentation to start naturally, without added yeast. They spend 15 days fermenting, approximately. Then we transfer them to barriques. But we are looking for the identity of the varieties from this area. I always say that our red wines have a white wine soul. Very fresh, very fluid, 
and with a low alcoholic grade. We don't want to imitate anyone as we are looking for our own identity in this region, for good or for bad. You say that your dreads have white soul, but indeed one of them, the Caño, you elaborate it as a white wine that we will taste later, a Blanc de Noir. That's right. Caño is the red variety with the highest acidity that we have here. It's a very vertical variety and with a low alcoholic grade. It is very versatile and you can play with it. We had the idea of making a Blanc de Noir out of Caño. Actually, in the old times, people used to make Espadero as a white wine or Al Corrido, as that's what Blanc de Noir is called here. But we have not seen it done with Caño before, at least as far as I know. It changes, as red is a very vegetal wine, whereas white wine, it is more mineral instead. This visit is extremely rewarding. This is a definitively a unique area where viticulture and winemaking are highly intertwined with the local folklore. We will taste the wines and we will try the food and we will do both at the same time. What better way? Marisol, let's start tasting your wines. We will start with your youngest Albarino. We only elaborate the variety, Albarino. This is the youngest. It is the traditional Albarino that has always been here. It is from 2021. It is very aromatic. Yes, it is very aromatic. I like it a lot. You can feel a peculiarity of Albarino. Being a wine without Crianza, it has a very intense mouth. It fills the mouth completely. That's true, it enters nicely. And it has a bitter aftertaste characteristic of Albarino. Also a little itching in the tongue that I always get from Albarino. Very good, very fresh. As an appetizer with fish. Actually, I drink it with lots of different foods, basically with everything. Even with white meat, it is very natural and feels really well. This is a wine that nature helps us to elaborate. It provides this alcoholic grade naturally. It is natural. It has not been manipulated. We only had care for it. This second one with Crianza on its list. This has more color. Yes, the color has increased in this wine. This is a 2012 vintage. It's a wine with a Crianza in stainless steel on its lees for at least 30 months. 30 months on its lees at the very start. We taste it as it evolves. We don't fix the Crianza time. We taste it every 15 days and we leave it on its lees. Or we take them out depending on its taste. And then it is left at rest in the winery. We bottled this wine a year ago, more or less. So it has stabilized it completely. It has lots of aromas. It has changed. It's still fresh wine, but has already acquired peach and honey tones. And pastisserie as well. Yes, a bit. It has a fuller mouth and it is a wine to age. And the third with Crianza in Barrique. With elaboration in Barrique, not only the Crianza, it has been fermented in Barrique. It is a 2017 vintage. It has been fermented in Barrique. Big barrels? No, 225 litre Barriques, small ones. We now have the 2018 vintage ready to get into the market. How long has it been in Barrique after the fermentation? As you see, it has these notes of wood. It is a very good wine. It has been in the Barrique all the time. We only take it out for the final blending, as we leave it for some time in the tanks and then it is transferred into the bottle. We leave it for a long time in the bottle. We already have the 2018 vintage in the bottle and the 2019 and 2020 ones, but they've not been out into the market yet. It needs time for the wood and the acidity to integrate. But it's very well balanced. Yes, they compensate to each other. 
and it provides those spicy and toasty notes. This is an excellent wine, and with a long finish, I still feel it a long time after swallowing. All right, Marisol, it has been a pleasure. Salud. Thanks for showing us your pasto and your wines. Thank you. Luis, we start with the tasting, which is the best part of the visit. We start with your wine label. Yeah, sure. This is an Albariño white label, Altos de Cristimil, Etiqueta Blanca. Altos... Cristimil, Etiqueta Blanca, which is where we are right now. These are very aromatic wines. It has very fresh aromatics, with apple and pear. In the palate, these are wines very easy to drink, and with that freshness, characteristic of Albariño. The nose is very aromatic, and as you were saying, white fruits overall, but very intense. Albariño has a medium intensity, not excessively intense, but they are definitely very fresh. And it has tension in the mouth, with acidity and some bitterness. This wine would pair perfectly well with an appetizer and fish or shellfish that are not very elaborated. Like adding lemon to the food. Exactly. <laughs> this other one is a little more elaborated from the vineyard that you have shown us before. Yes. On a hill at some height with older vines, right? Yes, correct. This is a wine that is a little more sophisticated. The Criantha has been longer with the wine on its lees gaining structure and complexity and becoming rounder. It has riper aromas, more complex, not that much freshness. On the palate, it's rounder, with more structure and body. It has those notes of pastisserie. It has stone fruits. These grapes provide a higher alcoholic grade to the wine. This wine has a little more alcohol. This one has 13. The other one had? 12.5%. Well, it continues to be low. It's not 14. Not at all. This is very good wine. I assume that it can accompany more sophisticated dishes based on fish. Yes, it pairs well with more elaborated dishes. Fatty fish, white meat. With this conclude our visit. Excellent wines and perhaps even better this vineyard that you have here. It feels like you should not take the grapes out of this beautiful paradise. We need to take them for them to grow again next year. Cheers, this is a cycle of wine. Yes, a cycle that repeats and repeats. Thank you. The best part is to try your wines. Let's start with your base Albariño. Yes, we start from our Santiago Roma, Rías Baixas Albariño. It is a monovarietal Albariño. This is a 2021 that we have just bottled. It's been in the bottle for a month and a half. It has a nice color with vibrant yellow tones. Yes, a fine golden color. White fruits. Fresh fruit, ripe apples. This is a fresh wine with just the proper acidity. It has a nice finish with good aftertaste, and it is persistent. I was going to say that, as I still feel it. What would you pair this wine with? Fish, rice, shellfish, or white meats, chicken, for example. With not very elaborated sauces for a white meat, it goes perfectly well. This is a Santiago Roma Selección 2020. It's an Albariño, Rías Baixas, from very old vines and free-run juice, without pressing. Once the alcoholic fermentation has finished, we get rid of those gross leaves. I'll serve this one. Thank you. And then we do Criantha on the fine leaves for five, six or seven months, depending on the harvest. In all the wines that we elaborate in our winery, since we look for a given personality, we work with the lees a lot. The lees are the sediments after fermentation, and on each vintage there is a series of components, including proteins that provide the characteristic terroir and taste of the variety. 
This is less intense than the previous one, less fruity, but it is more complex. Yes, the fruit is more ripened in the nose. Yes, ripe fruits. It is a greasy wine due to its crianza and leaves, and the fine done juice from very old vines, with more concentration of flavors and more glycerol. It shows this pastisserie associated with the leaves. This wine can last for seven to eight more years in the bottle. Yes, yes. Uh, perhaps the company this is more elaborated than with the previous one. Yes, perhaps. Even with more elaborated meats, it would pair perfectly well. This is the wine that I really want to try, your Padranai, which has been made in granite barriques. Correct. Today you will try a 2019 Pedranai. It is the same grape typology than the Santiago Roma Selección when it comes to maceration, election of grapes from old vines and free-run juice, but it has been fermented in the granite barrique that you have seen before. A granite barrique with an egg shape with a criantha on its leaves. It is a 2019 and still maintains a nice color. It is still very fresh and young. Yes, because these are wines of longevity. This special elaboration provides a series of characteristics that make the wine to be long-lived and preserve its youth. I get a salty sensation, as if I was smelling the ocean. There is that mineral aftertaste, as if I had tasted a stone. The stone is in the wine, definitively. I get this drying sensation as if I have sucked or stone. It really gets the characteristics of the granite, yes. All right, Santiago, glad to be here. Thank you very much. I have liked your wines very much, particularly this one that I have found very interesting. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show you my work and my way of life to the people in the USA or any place in the world. Thanks a lot. We are in the restaurant Ameca in La Illa and they're going to prepare marisco, selfies, for us. Actually, spider crab that they are taking out of the pool. Look what a beautiful crab. I can tell that it will be really good. Did you place it there like that? Yes, in cold water. Cold water? Yes, if alive in cold water, if dead in hot water. And then salt? Yes, lots of salt. How long it takes to cook? Once it's boiling, 20 minutes. While we wait for the crab, which will take half an hour to cook, we will eat some cigalas, scampi, which are typical from Galicia, from this area in Cambados, in La Illa, where we're now. And we will try it with the wine from one of the producers that we have visited these days. Well, we continue waiting for the big crab, but what better way than with clams, cook on the pan, that are delicious. Mmm, delicious. The wait is starting to be frustrating. How sad. Oh well, I will try this in the meantime. Tamborinas. Fantastic. The crab finally arrived. There is the head. Well elaborated with a good Albariño wine. Let me try. It is really good. Well, we end our mariscada with a piece of Santiago cake, which is the typical dessert of Galicia. We have eaten phenomenally. This is very good. Sure, we will start the tasting with the Blanc de Noir from the Barrique directly. This is a 2021 vintage, and it has been here since the harvest, around mid-September. We start the fermentation in stainless steel vessels because we like to control the first cycle of elaboration. 
When the fermentation ends, we move it here, and it stays here without racking or any manipulation. The one I have is the previous vintage. Yes, this one is 2021, and that one is 2020. Yes, it has the reduction notes. Yes, that is normal, as it has been closed in there with its lees. The lees absorb the oxygen, and the wines reduce. It is not very aromatic, not very fruity. No, no, there's not much fruit. This is a mineral wine instead, more terroir than fruit. This is a variety, aside from the bitterness, which is one of the characteristics of all the varieties in Galicia, as Gudeo is also really bitter. It also has that salty note to it. All our wines have that touch of saltiness that speaks about the region. This is also a Caeño, but elaborated as a red wine. This is the one in this bottle, but you're going to give me the one from the barrique. Yes, this is the 2021 vintage. As you said, the same grape elaborated in a totally different form. After harvest, we step on the grapes and it stays in contact with the skins between 10 to 15 days at most. While the fermentation occurs. After that, we press and to the barriques. This has a completely different aromatic range. Yes, you can feel some fruits here. To me, it comes with forest aromas and vegetal notes. Fresh and acid. Very fresh. As I said, this is the variety with a higher acidity in the area. There is lots of tension and acidity. It also has tannins, but it's very fresh, very Atlantic. It reminds me of a Cabernet Franc or something similar. Yes, it has lots of similarities. Pepe Luis, in honor of your deceased brother, how do you make it? We elaborate this wine from five plots. Plots with sandy soils that are very close to the Atlantic Ocean. We also elaborate by pressing the whole bunches and starting the fermentation in stainless steel. All the wines that undergo Criantha in wood, absolutely all of them, start fermentation in steel because we like to control the fermentation cycle when the primary aromas develop, as they are very volatile. We want to preserve them. When the fermentation ends, we then pass them to wood. We don't have a predefined Criantha time. We taste along the way and check how the equilibrium between the identity of the variety and the complexity supplied by the wood evolves. And with the leaves, right? Because I can feel them. Yes, once the fermentation ends, we don't rack the wine. The wine spends its whole life on its leaves. Fine leaves and some gross leaves, but without motion, just on top of them. It has great intensity and complexity. It fills the mouth and lasts for a long time. This wine has all the ingredients to become an outstanding wine. It's persistent on the palate. Sure, sure. Thanks for all your explanations and for showing us your winery and your wines. With this, not only we close this visit to your state, but also the visit to Rias Baisas, which has been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and giving us the opportunity to show what we do in our house. Very pleased to have you here. Thanks. We conclude our visit to Rias Baisas and we already feel the Galician Mourinho, which is the term used here to describe nostalgia of a place. It is said that no one misses home more than one born in Galicia. I now understand why. We really need to come back here, and soon. In the meantime, thanks and keep it up.